Carroll University Pioneers. Hello, everybody. Alongside the coach, Chris Wright. I'm Mike Martin. Uh, Chris, uh, Carroll, generally speaking, I think has a pretty good program, but they're coming in tonight three and six. Lakeland coming in six and three, having a pretty good start to their season. Uh, what's going on with, with Carroll College? Well, I think they, they were off to a bad start, but they played some pretty good teams, and they played some teams that are on the road. Uh, so, you know, their schedules, you know, early in the season has been a little bit rough for them. They did pick up a victory the other day against Illinois Wesleyan, who's ranked 15th in the country. So they're starting to play a little bit better, but I think they're kind of getting focused a little bit for a conference play, even though they're just one and three in their league. You mean you don't expect them to beat Marquette and Butler? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they played Marquette. I think the other one was Bradley. 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 Yeah, Bradley. I mean, Does it that's, matter? <laughs> yeah, two Division One teams, and which, again, that's a great opportunity for those kids when they say, hey, we got to play you know division one programs and obviously marquette's ranked in the you know top 25 this year and and bradley's always a pretty strong program too now lakeland comes in like i said with a six and three record when i look at their stats it seems like they have real good balance they got four guys uh scoring in double figures and zach hosenstein a sheboygan north grad is right up there with them yeah, they're averaging almost 80 points, 79 points a game. They're getting up and down the floor. Carroll's 10 points less than that, so it'll be kind of strange how that does. But yes, uh, relatively young squad here at Lakeland again. Not too many seniors, but they seem to get a lot of kids helping. They got a lot of kids. We looked at the stats earlier. They get a lot of kids getting minutes this year. Again, for them early on, it's something that's really well. For uh, They are right up at the conference league, but they... They unfortunately lost the game. They probably shouldn't have the other day. Otherwise, they'd be tied for the conference lead. Now, with uh, Carroll having won that big game, their last game, Illinois Wesleyan, and Lakeland coming off a loss, how do you see tonight's game panning out? Well, it's kind of strange as we come in here. The students are gone. And uh, basically, they're, they're all off. They've done their classes and things, so it's going to be pretty much of an empty gym. If I'm Lakeland College, I want to finish the season off before Christmas on a high note. And what they, you know, when they tripped up the other day, you know, that's not how you want to, you know, celebrate Christmas. So I want to finish off this, you know, the before Christmas break, you know, get a couple nice wins on, and then come back right after Christmas and, and have that thought in our minds that, hey, let's set our, our sights on the conference championship. I know this is not a conference game for Lakeland, but uh, they are starting off the season for an own conference. That's pretty impressive. Very impressive. And again, it's I want to build momentum. I want to build momentum into January and February. We're going to be back here in January. I'm very excited. We're going to see Lakeland play Concordia, who leads the league, and they got a couple kids from Sheboygan Lutheran, a couple brothers there. So, you know, this is just kind of like that stepping stone, I think, for the Muskies is to get some success now carried over into Christmas and then carried on to January and finished off conference play. Probably the most uh, familiar name for Lakeland uh, fans on the Carroll uh, <laughs> roster is their head coach, Paul Combs. Yeah, and he had a lot of success here. Took his success by winning some uh, conference championships here. Took it all the way then, went down and went to Platteville and then uh, had some success at Platteville as well. His teams were ranked up in the top 10 when he went to Platteville. Since then, now he's, he's started here at Carroll. He also has a very young squad, only like three or four seniors. So he's trying to put in his thing. But yeah, Coach Combs was always a really friendly guy. I know when we had him here and things like that, and he's had success. So I'm sure he's trying to build that program back. We're in the Moose and Donna Wilson <laughs> gym. Chris likes to call it the aquarium. Uh, Moose was here for over 20 years. And as we look at the banner up there, their, their men's basketball program has had uh, 17 conference championships and uh, that is very impressive. Yeah, and you know much more about that than I would, Marty. That's back before back when my... when they played in the Armory. Yeah, and back before my time. It was really a, a special thing to go to Lakeland games. And like I said, it, I think the Sheboygan Press not advertising and, you know, knowing when games are hurts them a little bit. But you mentioned attendance has been pretty good out there. I don't think you're going to get that tonight, but it's starting to pick up a little bit. Yeah, with that, we're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the tip-off for tonight's basketball game.
I came from five generations of teachers. Losing my job was the bottom falling out of my world. Meals on Wheels gives me a chance to be totally selfless. More than the food itself, a lot of seniors don't have family. So just to have someone to talk to, just to say, hey, how was your day? That means so much more than a meal could ever mean. We have to look outside of ourselves to be that lifeline to other people. It's worth it. Today. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pelican? Wait. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the parrot kept dribbling all over it. Where the cows go on vacation? New York. <laughs> in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Chris, I can't remember the last time I looked at a roster, <laughs> and it's not in number order. Exactly. <laughs> well, it is on the front, Marty. It's just with their stats. It's. Uh, yeah, I suppose bit. in that way, right? Yeah. A lot of guys we uh, had from a year ago, Marty. Nygaard from uh, Plymouth. Yeah, some Campos. familiar names, that's for sure. Pat McDonald, a scrappy little guard who'll come off the bench, number 11. Three officials uh, on this crew. We didn't get the names of the uh, referees. Sure is quiet. Chris always likes it when they don't call a lot of fouls, and uh, I'm with you on that. Uh-oh, we have new jerseys now. 
Hopefully the numbers are the same. I don't understand what they did there. Oh, they were going to go orange and black, I think. Okay. Tap is controlled by uh, the Pioneers. Those are tough numbers to read, Marty. A little bit. Yeah. We have a shot clock again, not like high school. Yeah, right. Getting shot clock. That. 30 seconds. Good hands. Ball taken away by uh, Nygaard. Both teams playing a man-to-man -man defense. Three ball is off no good. That shot attempt was by Shakur. Just getting going, Lakeland coming in, six and three. Platteville, uh, pardon me, Platteville. Carroll, the Pioneers are three and six. Both Pioneers, Marty, nothing wrong with saying that. Yeah, there you go. Fouls on uh, Lakeland. I like the graphic. Yeah, me too. Nygaard picks up his first foul. Tyler Ingbritson puts in a couple of free throws. Two to nothing, Carroll. He's kind of their force in the middle, Ingbritson. He's got a brother on the team as well. Carroll put on the press to begin the possession, but uh, Lakeland just cleared out for their point guard, and he was able to... Uh, Beat the defense uh, quite easily. Kick out, nice play. And nailing the three was uh, Jaquan. Pigis on that uh, three ball. Oh, nice move inside by Ingbritson. For an easy two. Yeah, I think he's going to be a force to reckon with, Marty. Ozenstein, the uh, North uh, grad that we touched, Boygan North, that we talked about not starting. Shot is off, no good and uh, trying to make the steal and the save was uh, Pegues, but uh, he was not able to do that. Carroll getting into their uh, offense, looking for uh, Ingbritson inside. Trying to force his way in. Another move and off the glass and in. He has all six points for the Pioneers. Inside to Nygaard, his shot is up and in. Way deep there for Nygaard. Yeah. A little bit of a penetrating pitch that time to get uh, Nygaard open. There's a good defense that time, knocked away by Nygaard. And, oh, the Muskies running the break to perfection, Chris. Wow, they get up the floor quickly, Marty. They certainly do. Nice feed by uh, Jockham. Well, two turnovers by the Pioneers have cost them four points. And that shot didn't want to go down. A good move inside by uh, Pierce, but he couldn't get it to go. And Lakeland got the offensive rebound, but uh, losing it was uh, Janad.
First substitutes are uh, coming in the ball game, both of them for uh, Pioneers. Another nice spin. Move. Yeah, they got that move. Down Pat making that nice basket was uh, Anthony Marlowe, and then uh, Carroll makes a steal. Wide open from three ball land, and nailing it was Penny. 11 to 7. Penny comes in averaging 10 points a game. Uh, nice move that time by uh, Janad. You know, compared to high school kids, they all got really nice, strong inside. Doesn't matter if you're a guard or a forward, they all have that nice move inside, nice and strong. Quite a difference between high school kids and college kids, just their strength, Marty. Right. Got that right. Good defense played by the Muskies. A ball goes in and then rims out. Lakeland comes away with it. Another basket by Pegues. We're all tied at 11. Not a lot of misses, Marty. No. Hosenstein might not be dressed tonight, Chris. It looks that way. I think that's him oh, standing man. along the bench there. Now sitting down, you can see him. He's yeah, the third think, guy from the yeah, right. I think you're right. In the in the light colored sweater. There's a nice replay. Scott. Oh, you're right about reading those jersey numbers, Chris. I couldn't tell if it was 10 or 11 at the line. Got a quick timeout, but Marty, I got the stat of the game tonight. What's that? Do you realize that Lakeland has scored 712 points? No. And their opponents have scored 712 points. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Nine games in, they've given up the same amount of That has to break tonight. Yeah. One way or the other, they're going to have... That reminds me of a story that was on TV about this guy who was running for some city office, and he forgot to vote. So when all the votes were counted, he and his opponent were exactly tied. They did the recount. They were still tied. So you know how they decided who was going to be the person that won? Flip of the coin. He lost. Uh, Moral uh, of the story, every vote counts. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, what do you got there, 10 or 11? That's got to be 10. 10. Hoort got the first but not the second. Coming away with the rebound was uh, Isaac Anderson. Also checking in is uh, Alec Vandekastle, number 15. Good. Good defense by the Pioneers. Yeah, very good defense. And Marlow. With Four five seconds. Yeah. Shot is off, no good. <laughs> Trying to save it was uh, Garrett Duff Duffin, but uh, he threw it out of bounds. Now they're going to say it was off the Pioneers. I didn't oh, see that. I didn't see that either. I thought he was just saying that. You know, to try right. and get the call, but it actually did happen. Pegues' three ball is no good. Good block out by the Pioneers. And he'll get the ball as it goes out of bounds. One of the blockers that time was uh, Taryn Hall, number 22. Blocking out the uh, Lakeland uh, rebounder. Uh, from Carroll. Also from Mauston, Wisconsin. 
Three ball rims out. Lakeland comes away with it. Shot attempt is no good by Duffin. Carroll limiting Lakeland to only one attempt. Should be looking inside here. You got a mismatch. Yeah, big time. Pegisa. Trying his hardest. Oh, high arching shot is up and in. That ball was made by uh, Taryn Hall. Was it 23 or 22? 22, I believe it was. I'm gonna look here. 23, Marty. Okay. I agree, I didn't know either. Oop. Good effort that time, but uh, not oh. able to save it. Oh, you're saying 22 hit that shot. Oh, okay. I think so. I'm not sure. That's what I thought. Definitely 23 <laughs> was out of bounds. Blake Williams. We got the A team here tonight. Scott Mailoff, our director. Richard Bartson doing camera one. And uh, Eric Wiesman. I recognized him when I saw him, Chris. It's been a long time, but he's doing camera two. And stepping out of bounds was uh, Don Yakum. Then, of course, it's you and me. Give me that look. Well, I don't for the A team. We're just stuck with each other. If we turn that W upside down, we'd be the M&M &M boys. There you go. <laughs> A nice rebound that time by uh, Carlton. On the miss was Ingbertson. Trying to do it inside and out. Oh, what a drive to the hoop. Jockham. Lakeland uh, down two. Fast moving game, Marty. Yes, we like that. Their team foul. Uh, Carroll has not picked up a team foul yet, Chris. We played eight minutes and we have only three. Yeah. I'm knocking don't, on wood. Yeah, don't say too much. Defense stepped behind the screen instead of coming out on top. And that allowed Ryan Clary to make a three. Jump shot just didn't want to go down for Jockham. Lakeland trying to run, but uh, Carroll doing a great job of getting back on defense. Shot is blocked great and hustle. saved. What a play by uh, Blake Williams. Tell you, Carroll wants it pretty, pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, and they're hitting their outside shots. Taryn Hall with that three, and it's 21 to 13. There you saw it. It's a full timeout, Scott. So we got 30 seconds. You can go to commercial break if you want. Queen is just my everything. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. Back at the aquarium on uh, the College of Lakeland University. I don't even have to fill it out, Marty. Oh. See how close I am. Ingbertson leads uh, all scorers with six points. Uh, I take that back. The geese has seven for Lakeland. Just gonna give you my stats, Marty. 
Going to say that they are 58% uh, shooting for Carroll. You said they're hitting their shots. Yeah, you're right there. Four out of seven three-pointers they've made. Going hard to the hoop was Carlton, and he picks up the foul. Ingbrickson is a 6'7 uh, senior from Elk Grove, Illinois. On the line is Dante Carlton, a 6'2 junior from Green Bay East. When he played at East Marty, he was a very good high school player. Yeah, I remember that. Remember that one game we did? I think it was at South. It was West. It was like a dunk fest. <laughs> Another three ball by the Pioneers. Well, the other thing I remember about him is that uh, I think he was the quarterback of the football team. He was really good at that, too. Ball goes off the leg of a Pioneer. Lakeland will keep it down here. It's a 10 point advantage for Carroll. As long as they keep hitting their shots, Chris, it's gonna be awfully hard for Lakeland to come back. Jump shot is off, no good. And again, uh, Carroll comes away. With the board, Ingbritson threw it away. The only thing they're not doing well is taking care of the ball. Pretty good defense there, knocking the ball out of the hands of uh, the Lakeland shooter, Duffin. Rare miss by the Pioneers. Yeah, and they had a shot at the offensive board too, but uh, Pierce was not able to hang on to it. I have them five of seven. Five of eight from three, Marty. Five of eight from three. Yeah. Wow. They're pretty good. You know, coming in, they're shooting just 40% from there, so. Close defense by the Pioneers. Yeah, and all of a sudden, nothing's going in for the Muskies. They've had some pretty good looks. Oh, a lot of contact there. No yeah, call. I thought he lowered the shoulder. I agree. But uh, no call. Got to work on those Pratt falls, Chris. Put your shoulder in your chest, you got to fall down. A good feed inside to Ingbritson, and he lays it up and in easily. Getting beat on the defense was uh, Nygaard. I'll tell you, the Pioneers came in here with a mission. They're playing very well. <laughs> Largest lead sitting at 12 right now. And taking a three-point shot was Janad, and he got fouled. He'll be shooting three free throws. Janad, a junior from Chicago. I mean, they're not even hitting their uh, shots from the floor. Now they can't make their free throws. They're one of three so far. He's pretty good, 76%. Did you get three? Yeah, 
One for three trip. Let's see, uh, Pagis just came back in the ball game, Chris. Let's see if he can't uh, provide a little bit of a spark for the Muskies. Oh, they're gonna need some weak side help. This is where they're getting beat. Another well, offensive rebound by uh, Carroll. Three ball. Shot is up and in, that one by Cleary. Ingridson with the block. Well, they got three chances the last trip, Marty. This is one thing they don't do well is take care of the ball all the time. Ingertson had a good look oh, from outside, boy. and they got the offensive rebound and couldn't put the uh, shot in in what looked like a very easy attempt. Chris Lakeland kind of lucked out there. And nailing the three right back at you is Isaac Anderson. Lakeland still down 11. I need somebody to spark him, Marty. Ingbertson again, Chris, doing it on the defensive end. Cleary feeling it. Nope, take that back. That was Troy Howard. Another timeout, Marty. And they are now down 14. I think that equals the largest lead for uh, Carroll. Well, what's surprising, Marty, is Lakeland, I think, wants to get going in transition. And when they're making all the baskets, yeah, they there's can't no get out transition. And run. You can't get out and run. Right. <laughs> and uh, make it a lot more difficult. And, uh, and I will say the post play and offensive rebounds has been an issue for Lakeland on the defensive end. When we got this first stat sheet, I was actually quite surprised that Carroll had no offensive rebounds and Lakeland had two. I thought those two numbers would be reversed. I have, uh, I have now, that's that's right, I just have three, so it's just of late. Okay, so. yeah, right, yeah, this last uh, flurry, Carroll has uh, really pounded the boards offensively. Sam Schrader is the head coach for the Lakeland Muskies. He's uh, in his second season as the head coach. He spent six seasons as an assistant and the recruiting coordinator. He's been on campus for a while. Well, there was a walk. Another three ball by Anderson, and he's hot. There you see it. Concordia is still down a little bit from 58 down to 52 percent but they're getting those extra opportunities with offensive rebounds Duffin trying to uh, push the action but again uh, Carroll back on defense That time, a good acting job, but uh, no call. As uh, Lakeland scores, Janad on that basket, and it's down to a nine-point Carroll lead. And bouncing it up and in was uh, Cleary. Nice screen, 
and kick out. Nice play. Anderson with a shot fake. Couldn't get the ball to go in this time. No, Carroll on a bust out. Oh, there's a walk. I really like that play there. Nice stream by Anderson. And you just pop out to the open area, get the ball. And did you get that turnover by them? I did. Not too many turnovers by Carroll. At least it doesn't seem like it. I have uh, five, Marty. Okay, yeah, it's more than I thought they would add, but that's still not too bad. We're down to the five minute mark. Nygaard right down Main Street, gets ridden all the way to the basket and draws the foul. He'll be shooting two. We will at some point try to find out what's wrong with uh, Zach Hosenstein. See why he's not uh, suited up tonight. I don't know about you, but I was looking forward to seeing him play. And that's 12 points out of the lineup. Too. Right, not, exactly. It has to be accounted for. 35th meeting between Lakeland and Carroll. First met in 1956, Marty. Yeah, thought it'd be longer. Lakeland shooting 71% uh, for the season on their free throws. They haven't come close to that tonight. Good ball movement by the Pioneers and it leads to a three point basket. Ball with that one. I think he's got four. Four three-pointers for Hall off the bench. Duffin trying to go baseline, nowhere to go. And the ball gets tapped away, and the Pioneers come away with it again. Bango! What is going on? Really? I got him for five threes, Marty, if that's correct. I'm not sure. Ball. And Lakeland just panicking, trying to come back. Not setting up on offense. It's a 16-point lead now. That's a travel this time. I don't know if this is Carroll's Look at that. idea to make <laughs> all these threes. They have attempted 157. In That's, 10, nine games. Yeah, which is actually about 60 less than uh, Lakeland, but it's going in, Marty, so yeah. not uh, more often. <laughs> or, or, yeah. Like I said, I expected a more uh, half court game, pounding it low. Well, Ingbertson is a good uh, option if you're going to do that. Well, that's how they started with him, but. Duffin on a spin move in the lane, shoots it and scores, and he's fouled. He finally gets a basket, Marty. I had him 0 for 5 before that. He's coming in averaging 13 points a game. You need Well, he Garrett fits Duffin. right in with the Muskies tonight. Yep. 0 for 5. See if he can get this free throw to go in. He's from Princeton, Illinois. Uh-oh, wide open three shooter, couldn't get it in. Carlton on the board. Good help defense by uh, Carroll. You know, when somebody tries to drive, all of a sudden he's guarded by two guys. There's a nice screen by Carlton there to start with. I think that's gonna be Nygaard's second foul. That is, and he's out. Anderson coming in for him. Oh. Jockham can't get anything going either, Marty. He's just one for, oh boy. A bunch. <laughs> Seven. So two guys are two for 13. Thus the deficit. 
like to see him get it under 10, Marty, before the Yeah, me too. Half. Not that way. Yeah, Ingbertson uh, being a part of the offense there by making an assist to his teammate Hall for an easy basket. He's a complete player, Chris. Hall came in averaging four points a game, and I unofficially, I might be wrong, but I have him for maybe 17. Duffin's shot is no good. Oh, driving baseline and getting the shot off was Pierce, but he couldn't get it to roll in. Anderson, baseline, jump shot is no good, but uh, Anderson got the off on Ingbertson, and he's going to get called for a foul. That noise you hear in the background is the Carroll Pioneer bench. There might not be a lot of students here making any racket, but the bench is very positive. Boy, they're up by uh, 16 with a chance to get it to 18 or possibly 19 the way they're shooting their threes. And there's less than two minutes left. 135 and counting in the half. Ingbertson trying that spin move. Couldn't get it in. You know, if you can force him to turn the other way, I don't think he'd be very effective, but uh, Lakeland has not gotten that down yet on their defense. Good point. He always likes to come back to the right. Of course, even a better way to stop him would be don't let him get the ball. <laughs> Janad's jump shot is off. Anderson with the rebound. He's way off. Yeah, way off on that uh, putback shot. One minute left. And, uh, I wanted it under 10. It's just grown, Marty. Very impressed with how Carroll came in tonight, Marty. They got some early loose balls and things that uh, kind of set the tone. And you know, when you come into an opponent's gym, you want to do the little things. Well, they've not taken the crowd away, but they've taken away the uh, Muskies' momentum. Playing you know what I think took the crowd away, Chris? Christmas break. <laughs> yeah, that's true, but... Uh, all, All right, no All shot clock, 20 seconds left, and uh, Carroll calls a quick timeout. 30-second timeout, wow. Same thing at this level of college, use it or lose it? I don't know. That I don't Did know. you prep for tonight's game? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I would say the answer to that question would be, uh, I would say yes. I would say yes, too. Uh, little heads up for the people watching tonight. Uh, we will be TV8, uh, TV8, WSCS TV will be at North on Friday, uh, minus Chris, but we do have Brian Burr filling in for you. He'll do the best he can to do that. Uh, so we look forward to bringing you uh, Notre Dame at North on Friday. It's also uh, Hall of Fame induction night. Dick Rasmussen from uh, my class, the 68ers, will be inducted into the North High Wall of Fame. So we look forward to bringing you that ball game. And down near the end of the bench, in the white sweater with the beard, Eric Hosenstein, not suited up. Under 10. Pop out. Oh, I didn't, couldn't get it in. And coming off with the rebound for Lakeland was uh, Alex Vandecastle prevent uh, Carroll from uh, building on that lead, and there you see it. They go into halftime with a 16 point lead. I'm Rudy Tempesta. I'm 92 years old. I fought in World War II. Then I came home and worked for the post office for 70 years. I've been getting meals on wheels, and I enjoy it.
The most important thing about Meals on Wheels is you meet the people, which to me is fantastic. You need people to keep your brain moving. That's what life is about. It's love and having a conversation with people. When I was here... Okay, hi. My name's Tim Bull. I'm a ISA certified arborist uh, with the city of Sheboygan. I've been working here about a year. Uh, one of the primary focuses of my job is to treat the ash trees. The emerald ash borer is an insect that's been in Wisconsin for over 10 years and it's working its way kind of north from southern Wisconsin. It's been found in Sheboygan for for a few years now it's been around and the focus is for the city to try to save the ash trees before they all die. Let's, there's about 5,000 ash trees on the, on the street between the street and the sidewalk and just to give you a sense there's about 20 to 23,000 trees between the street and the sidewalk so 5,000 of those are ash trees so it's important to the, for the city to not let all those trees die at the same time. So the emerald ash borer is an insect where it gets in the tree, it lays eggs, the eggs hatch and burrow under the bark, and they basically suffocate the tree as they feed. Now it takes a number of years before you, you, you'll see an effect from the insect. But the important thing is when you're trying to save an ash tree is to is to treat it with an insecticide before you see an, before you see the tree declining because by the time the tree you see the effects that the tree is dying it's it could be too late sometimes it's not too late but but many times the damage is already that's done is already done and can't be repaired so it's more of a preventative measure that we're doing and uh, I've been treating ash trees for about six years now I've seen I've seen it work. I've seen the I've seen where I've treated a tree. I came back two years later, treated the same tree again, and the tree was still healthy. But maybe the neighbor the neighbor's trees that were untreated were almost dead. So I believe in it, and research backs it up. It's supposed to be over 96 percent effective. As far as the city's plan, their plan is to treat half the ash trees and remove half the ash trees because it's expensive either way you want to look at it. If you want to remove them all, it's a huge expense. If you want to treat them all, it's very expensive. So a kind of compromise is to try to save half, remove half over a three-year period. So this year, 2017, we've, I've treated between 1,100 and 1,200 ash trees to date. And over the next year and over the next two years we'll get to that 2500 mark where we've potentially saved half the trees. Now the city's doing a three-year treatment process where every three years we'll have to retreat if we want the tree to continue to survive and uh, right now the insecticide that we're using the active ingredient is emamectin benzoate there's a number of different products that contain that it's able for two years, where you, every two years you should retreat, but a lot of research is saying you can get at least three years out of it, so that's why the city's gone with the three-year plan. Well, first of all, the process of picking which trees to save and which trees not to save really stems from, is the tree in a good location to begin with? So if we're only going to save half the ash trees, we want to save the ones that are in a good spot versus the ones that are not an ideal spot. So we look for uh, medians, grass areas between the road and the sidewalk that are at least six feet wide. This one here that we're in is, is probably more like eight feet. And we want to look for spots where there's no overhead power lines that the tree's growing into or if the tree is really buckling up the sidewalk or something like that, maybe that's not an ideal tree to save. So once we determine which trees we want to save, the process is pretty simple. We, we drill into the tree with a small, about a a little smaller than a pencil size hole and a tree will take anywhere from four holes to I had one this year that I had ten holes in so average I would say six or seven drills about an inch under the bark 
and then those holes get filled up. You put a, an injection tee in each one of those holes, so it's all sealed, and each one of those tees is connected with a small hose, which all stems back to a bottle which, which has the insecticide in it. Now, the tree, the amount, of, the amount of insecticide that's used depends on the tree size. So the rate the city uses is a five milliliters per diameter inch of the tree. Now, diameter is measured at breast height, four and a half feet above ground. Okay, yeah, so this tree here is 18 inches in diameter. So 18 times five is 90 milliliters that this tree requires. So as we're going down a street, I have a guy helping me. He measures them, he records what's gonna be used. He records the address where the tree is and I get to the tree and I get to work drilling, setting it up, measuring the chemical that's going in. And once I get it all set, it's just a matter of pressurizing the container, the bottle with the insecticide to get that insecticide to the tree. And really, it's just a, a bike pump that I'm using to pressurize. And I give it about 30 pounds of pressure. And that'll get the insecticide to the tree. And it's up to the tree to take it in. So every tree is different. Some trees take it right in. Some trees are a little slower. Sometimes you don't get that uptake. It, it, the tree just refuses to, to suck anything up. So then you, that's a sure sign that the tree is too far gone and, and there's no point in trying to save that tree. So once I have it all set up and pressurized, it's up to the tree to take it in. And really I could increase the pressure to 40 pounds, even 50 pounds, but it, it isn't gonna make a difference how fast the tree takes it in. It's, Really, the pressure is just getting the chemical to the tree. And once, once the, the lines, the, the hoses are all clear, so you can see the blue, the chemical is blue, you can see it going in, and once those lines are all emptied out, then you can un, undo the pressure and unhook the tree, and that's all that needs to be done. Now, everything, when we leave a tree that we've treated, we, we got a can of blue spray paint, we put a, a dot on the street side, of the tree uh, roughly two three feet off the ground and that is a symbol that we've treated that ash tree that we plan on saving that ash tree and we'll also put a, a pesticide sign down that says keep off pesticide that's something that needs to be done it's required by the the pesticide regulations for the state so those signs will leave for a day and we'll pick them up the next day but the blue dot will stay so we'll always know that that tree was treated in 2017. As far as danger to people walking by or anything like that with the, with the pesticide that we're using, the, the, caution, the word is caution on the, on the label of this insecticide, which is the lowest toxicity. Really, it's not much to worry about since it's all going right into the tree itself. There's, there's nothing gonna be on the grass or in the air or anything really to worry about as far as that goes. As soon as, as, soon as I leave the tree and, and the blue dot will stay there but nothing else will be there, that tree is, is safe to be around. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Having trouble finding Connor's middle school? Would you like directions? No, why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm, I'm tired of fighting with him over homework. Home, walk, restaurant, need a review? No, I need help. He's very smart, but his mind it wanders. He's disorganized. I think I understand. Oh, good. French fries. Finding best potatoes. No! Russet. Fingerling. You can't go. <sighs> Why don't you understand me? Sorry, I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org.
For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. ExploreUnderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. National Girl Scout Line now how? If I get low, then I call Mojo. Got the latest project for the promo. Hey man. How you doing, Mr. Rudy? Yeah, what's up, man? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. How you been? Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> you gotta kiss the face. Yeah. What kind of things, you know, had, had you learned, you know, your work as postal service that kept you going? You know what that takes to be a postman? You got to love seven. the people. Right. To me, Meals on Wheels is the most wonderful thing. You guys come in here and I see you and you talk to me for a few words and all that. I think that's great. That's the food of life. Yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, I am. <laughs> When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. We're back at Lakeland University where the Muskies trail Carroll University 42 to 26. Uh, some halftime stats. Uh, the big one, Chris, is Carroll making nine of 16 three-pointers, four of six by uh, Taryn Hall, and he leads all scorers with 14 points. Uh, joining him near the top are uh, Ryan Cleary and Tyler Ingbritson. They both have eight. Leading the Muskies is uh, Joaquin Pegues with seven and uh, Isaac Anderson with six. He made a couple of threes. Uh, the other big stat in here, Chris, is uh, Carroll with uh, 22 rebounds to Lakeland, 17. And I was looking at the uh, season stats, both teams are minus seven on the rebound charts. Lakeland getting out, rebounded by almost eight, 7.6. Carroll by uh, almost five at uh, 4.8. So neither team has really shown themselves to be uh, real strong rebounders. What do you got? Well, I think you hit it on the head. The number one key is the difference of the game is three pointers. It's a 16-point uh, deficit, and uh, Carroll's made six more. That's 18 points. There's... <laughs> There's no other way to, to, to change what's going on is Carroll came in here and they're making shots and exactly what you said, they, they weren't making them all year, but for some reason 
they find this gym to their liking. Uh, Lakewood's going to have to, uh, I would say, attack the basket. And if they do get those rebounds, they got to get out in transition. There hasn't been a lot of transition opportunities for the Muskies because the ball seems to keep going in the hole for uh, Carroll. And if they don't make it, they've been hitting the offensive glass. They have uh, a couple of those as well. Eric Nygaard uh, sat out the end of the first half with two fouls. He's back in the starting lineup. So that'll help the Muskies. And uh, falling down on the drive is uh, Ingbertson, and then over him is Nygaard, and Lakeland gets called for the travel. Yeah, that's the uh, sixth tra uh, turnover for, uh, and I can say that's official because <laughs> I'm looking at this official right. stats as opposed to mine. Um, but you usually get pretty close. Yeah, when I keep my eyes open. Here's another thing they got to take away this post play early in the game. This is where Carroll did a lot of their damage. There you Better go. Better defense that time by Nygaard protecting against that spin. Back to his right side. No scoring so far here in the second half. We just got started. There's 19.09 remaining in the ball game, but Lakeland is down 16. This is the largest lead of the game for uh, Carroll. Uh, they started hitting those uh, three-pointers early, Chris, and uh, oh boy, continued on through most of the first half. What are we gonna have you here? It's uh, 30. Another thing, Marty is. Uh, we mentioned Lakeland's averaging almost 80 a game. That's the pace where Carroll is at, and when you're at 26, yes. that's nowhere near getting yourself no. to 80 points. You know, it's hard enough to make up a 16-point deficit, but uh, I don't think there's any way that they're going to be able to uh, you know, even get it up into the middle 70s. Well, uh, Carroll playing just too good a defense. Yeah, a conference game coming up, I believe, MSOE comes in here on Saturday. They are uh, tied with Lakeland at 4-1 uh, in the league. Concordia leads it, that's why I'm saying in January when we'll be back here. Looking forward to that game. January 14th, Concordia comes here. Uh, that'll be uh, a, a great game. Uh, two Jers brothers. In this uh, fishtails handout that was on our table for us, Chris, They've got Lakeland 4-0 and in conference. No, oh, I thought they lost to, uh, oh, I thought they lost to Illinois Tech the other day to go 4-1. and one. Yeah, 4-1. They and did one. lose to Illinois Tech. Yeah, right. it's 4-1. and one. Okay. Uh, so the fishtail is wrong. Well, half of it. Depends which half of it you look at. <laughs> Another basket that time by Soli. Yeah, on this side, they're 4-0, but if you look at the conference standing, they're 4-1. Okay, all right. Conference standings there, and also if you look at the, uh, oh, nice pass inside Nygaard for two. Yeah, if you, you look at the results on their schedule that's in here, too, they show them with that loss. Yeah, that was a tough road loss in Chicago. That's a travel. And not called getting the hoop for Carroll is uh, Charlie Soul. Soul is from Oregon, Wisconsin. Line drive free throw is in. So, uh, hit 34 now of 44 on the season. Big East is going to have a hard time getting a shot off against his defender, who's about six inches taller than him. Nygaard doing a good job of getting back on defense. Uh, Ingersoll looking for the fast break. Oh, that's off his leg. Good call by the official. Let's 
see a little better hustle out of you next time on that ball. I was <laughs> a little short on the <laughs> He's short location. On alligator armed it. <laughs> yeah, I was short on the location of the, the ball, working on my stats instead. My guard. Ooh, what a, oh boy, Ingersoll. I think I'm pronouncing his name wrong. <laughs> Ingbritsen. Uh, got called for the fall. <laughs> That's his second. And the free throw woes continued. Lakeland was only three for eight in the first half, Chris. Now they're three for nine. For the season, they were shooting 71%, almost 72 Oh, wow. That was quite a move. We've seen that quite a bit tonight, Marty. That's a signature move of uh, Carroll College or Carroll University, at least tonight. They uh, seems like they all can do that. Tyler Ingbertson is looking at the official like, man, life, what do I got to do to draw a foul? I don't disagree with him. And you know what's weird is there no double team help on that either. Um, it, uh, that's all up to Nygaard to hold the fort there. I'll tell you, he's got his hand, hands full with uh, that young man. Oh my. What ball handling and what ball movement. I got him four of six shooting in the first four minutes here to extend the lead to 20, Marty. Now looking tough for the Muskies. Paul Combs had his boys ready to go. And just one and out, that's pretty much been the story. Also, not a lot of offensive rebounds or second chances for Lakeland. They've only got two in the whole game. Anderson with a nice rebound. Lakeland trying to get the break going, and they do. And uh, Instead, they're going to get a turnover. You know, offensive foul on Janad. Fifty-one, thirty-one. Carroll with a uh, well-earned twenty-point lead. They've played well tonight. Shot the three well. You know who else that uh, Lakeland doesn't have? Marty is Carlos Campos, their leading scorer. So they have two guys, Lakeland, out of their lineup tonight. Again, good ball movement leads to an easy basket. That one for uh, Seoul. Um, you know, we had mentioned in the opening, Lakeland had four double-digit scores coming into tonight's game. And uh, like you said, having two of them out, I mean, that hurts big time. It'd be like having uh, Trubisky out for the Bears. I knew the Bears were going to win this week, Marty. I, I, I wanted the Packers to win, but... I knew with my brain, realistically, what was going to happen. Yeah, hey, very close a better game. better team. Better defense, for sure. Better defense. You know, the three front guys on the defensive line for the Packers out, three front line guys for the Bears out. That our uh, offensive line and defensive line. Yeah. That doesn't spell good. They uh, were hurting on the offensive line with all those injuries, for sure. Oh. 
And I want to know what's going on every year with the training in Green Bay. Every year they have like eight, nine guys, it seems, that are hurt well, or out. I, I would venture to say, Chris, that that is pretty consistent throughout the league. I, you know, I don't think you can... The healthy on. ones are the ones that are winning, are still, you know, that don't have as many guys. I will right, say. And, and that's going to, in most cases, be the case. Yep. Uh, yep. The one instance where it really didn't work out was with Philadelphia when they won the uh, championship last yep. year with their quarterback. But they went from a starter to a second stringer that uh, played like a starter. <laughs> Schrader yep. talking to the official about something. Yep. It was about being out of the coach's box. Well, he's having enough tough night here. One thing you want to do is beat the old coach who comes in here. That should have been a walk. Yeah. Instead, it's a lost ball by Carlton. Carroll very crisp with their ball movement. Wow. And cutting through to the basket and getting an easy two was Ryan Cleary. I mean, all their bat, you know, they made a lot of threes in that first half, but now everything is point blank range, Marty. They, they are getting deep into the paint. Carlton had his shot blocked and they're calling a foul on uh, Carroll. I thought uh, Blake Williams made a good block, but he's getting tagged with his third foul. Well, as we mentioned, MSOE comes in here. They're nine and one and four and one in league. Uh, that uh, okay. Coach here is also there too at MSOE. Uh, um, uh, what are you thinking of? Uh, of course, well, if you could tell me that, you wouldn't be <laughs> complaining. Brian, I can't remember. Uh, coaches at MSOE. Oh, boy. He coached here as well. Schultz? No, 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 no. I'll have to remember. Should I ask my smartphone? Who's the coaches at MSOE? That'll b really bother me then, Coach. I can't remember. He's a good guy, too. Who's the head coach at MSOE for basketball? Graham Johnson? Brian Miller. Brian Miller. I knew it was Brian. I got that part right. Brian Miller. Oh, another deep penetration for uh, Carroll. Stay down. A good defense that time yep. by Isaac Anderson. I can't believe Lakeland's still stuck on 34 points. 13 minutes left. Oh. Makes a difference when you got the A team here. Yeah. Report from uh, my Jake wife that the uh, everything looks good. Whoa. And the sound good. Yeah. Wow. Another. They in the are painter. just uh, owning the floor here tonight. They now have a 23 point lead. And, uh, ooh. You know what it looks like? Men against boys. Yeah. And again, we've mentioned two starters out, two leading scores, one and three. But, uh,. They got a full timeout with 12.35 left. Con Carroll is up by 23. So we were walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's smart. I really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't have really another bad day. I really hope we don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Yeah, back at uh, Lakeland University, where the Muskies are having a tough time of it here tonight. Carroll College playing very well. Thank you. Updated stats. Yep. Adam got us the stats. 
We want to thank Lakeland uh, University for their help. We always enjoy coming out here. Uh, and they always treat us well, Chris. Carroll 50% at halftime, up to 55%. Lakeland 32% in the first half, down to 31-6. It's not getting any easier for the fish. Taryn Hall hasn't made a point since uh, halftime. Ryan Clary uh, is up to uh, 10. Ingbritson uh, still sitting at 8. Charlie Soule got has 9. And Lakeland loses a handle there. Ooh, 10th turnover. And Lakeland loses it out of bounds. It looked like a Euro move that time, Chris, by Blake Williams. I thought he got an extra step in there. No travel call, however. Lakeland sticking with the man-to-man -man defense. He went the other way, Chris. Did you see that? How do you do? Came back to the left hand, kissed it off the glass, and doink. Well, what's strange is that we mentioned Carroll, I thought, in the opening would want to pound it inside more, not rely on a three. Well, in the first half, they shot 16 threes and made nine of them here in the second half through eight minutes. They've only shot one. They didn't make it. And everything now is in the paint where they normally do all their work. Right. And clank, clank, clank. It doesn't matter who throws it up there. It's not going in. Yeah. Then Van de Castle uh, and they don't look, away. They don't look like they have good shots either, Marty. They don't look square and they're just kind of trying to force to try to get baskets in because you're trailing by 23. I agree. Good point. And we get Nygaard with the fall. That's going to be his fourth. Check that. It'll be his third. Nygaard having a tough night. Six points. One rebound. Said MSOE rolls in here Saturday. Conference play, big game. That shot is off, taken by Hall. Duffin, good Got pump fake, couldn't get the shot off. Clank. And missing that shot for Lakeland was uh, Van de Castle. And the travel called. Lakeland will get it back. Still a 23-point advantage by the Pioneers and uh, almost halfway through the second half. Well, it's been a struggle. Lakeland's only scored eight points so far this half. They only had 26 in the first half. Shot attempt is no good. Van de Castle no good. <laughs> Lakeland did get an offensive rebound. Yep, well, you hit it on the head. Another miss. Ooh. That's got to be going that way. Picking up that foul for the Pioneers is Nick Penny. Duffin uh, took a shot there, Marty. Yeah, he's uh There's a nice shot. Yeah. Jean Coeur. Scott Mailoff, our director tonight. Richard Bartson, Eric Wiesman on camera. Chris Wright doing the color. I'm Mike Martin doing the play-by-play. -play. Yeah. 
Been a tough goal of it tonight for Lakeland. Uh, really had a tough night shooting. Duffin with a good pump fake, and he draws the foul. He'll be shooting a pair. Duffin struggling. He's only got two points, coming in averaging 13. Janad has oh, five. Brick that averaging one. averaging 16. Duffin was 0 for 1 from the line in the first half. He bricked that one. Come on, Duffer, get it in there. Garrett of the one for two trip. Fast game though, Marty. Very fast. Halfway through the uh, second half already. And good help, D. Quick cutters. Oh, break and wide open for the easy layup was uh, Anthony Marlowe. I don't think he thought that was going to happen like that <laughs> until he looked and there was nobody down the lane, so he decided to drive his body right down and make an easy layup. Rolling down to the nine minute mark left in the ball game. Nygaard uh, is fouled. Marlowe picking up the personal. Well, that's one thing Lakeland's doing is getting to the line, but they're not making any. That's right. It's like the Badgers. Uh, through that last time out, Carroll was four for five on free throws. Lakeland only seven for 14. It certainly wouldn't be the difference in the game, but at least it'd uh, give them a chance to uh, come back a little better. I mean, right Probably. now they're still down 20, 23 points. And Lakeland has yet to hit a three in the second half as well. They've only hit three in the game. Three for 14, Normally according to this they make sheet. Eight a game. Wow. Again, deep but a miss. Nygaard playing pretty good defense inside. Got a little help from uh, Duffin. And then Lakeland gets the call on the out of bounds. We haven't mentioned Sam Kaminsky's on the uh, Lakeland roster, the six eighter. Right. He hasn't played much all season, just four minutes. Um, still working his way in there. I'm just looking, this Pegues is 5'9, Chris, and he's being guarded by. Uh, Troy Howard, who is 6'2". Now that's a lot of inches to give up. Makes it tough to get shots off. And the ball goes out of bounds, and Anderson goes down, but uh, he's up. Just like goes he's to show you, okay. too, that you know, people say, oh, anybody can play college and do whatever. Sam Kaminsky was a pretty nice high school player. <laughs> no kidding. And uh, he's struggling for minutes at Lakeland, so... I had one guy tell me. You're at, it's I, had good. I had one guy tell me. I told him we were out here doing a game. This is a couple of years ago. He says, "Yeah, those guys aren't very good." So oh, you don't think so? Come on out there and watch them. You got that These right. guys got talent, yep. and I think it just goes to show when you look at guys in the Big Ten or you know yep. how really good those yep. guys are. As I mentioned, it Sam Kaminsky's in the game. All right, Sam. That wears number thirty. Pegues. He's already plus two on the floor. Keep him in there. Yeah, I like having his height a little bit. Give him a chance. Guarding Ing Ingbertson. Be an interesting matchup. He's a little longer. And, and Sam got the block, but he's going to pick up the foul first. He's got to stay down on his feet. Use your body, not leave your feet in your hands. Kaminsky's a 6'8", Ing Ingbertson is a 6'7", so that's a good matchup. Yeah, but uh, Sam's just got to stay nice and tall there. Use your body, not uh, your hands, to... Uh... 
That's the first points of the second half for uh, Tyler Ingridson. Sam's first foul on the season. Game number 10. Was over at the uh, quick trip a couple of months ago, actually, and uh, saw Sam. He came over. We talked for a few minutes. Said he's doing good out here. He likes it. Grades were good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I say the same thing. Kaminsky working hard on the defense. And Kaminsky with a strong rebound. Lakeland playing pretty good defense that time. The Geese with a tough assignment on defense. This guy is 6'2", he's 5'9". Uh, and then he scores on the other end. Britson uh, had it on the high post, couldn't find anybody open underneath. And kissing it off the glass was Pierce. Whoa. Nothing. Oh, I had the bangle all ready to go, Chris. That was pretty deep. He couldn't make it. Pierce putting his head down, going right to the hoop. Anderson with a slap, but he must have got the ball. Deontay Carlton back in for the fish. Good hustle. A good hustle by uh, Pegues to try and save it. You know, he's pretty small. <laughs> They list them at 5'9". That's yeah. a half inch shorter than me, Marty. What are you, what are you saying about us? I think they overextended uh, his height. Oh. Wow. Sam just missed a block on that shot, and it winds up going in. Duffin couldn't get it. Well, the toughest thing, Marty, is going to be tonight. These players have a humongous game on Saturday, Saturday before the break. You just were whooped in your home gym. <laughs> you have no students, and some of your friends are gone. Yep. You know, what are you going to do tonight, tomorrow, to get yourself ready for a big game that's got conference implications in front of you? Um, be strange what, what Lakeland does tonight. Right, right. That'd be almost one of those things to get your guys together tonight and, you know, Call up the uh, Papa John to get some pizzas and <laughs> put on something, or you know, the coach get get your guys together, you know, to uh, it, it, today's over. Let's move on. That's got to go the other way. Yeah, Pierce over the back. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Chris. Uh, it's, you know, they came off of a, or they're going to come off of a real bad loss. you got to be able to bounce back. And uh, when you're talking about the comp conference implications, the coach has to make the boys aware of that big time. Yep. Forget this one. Wash it away. Let's look at film on MSOE. Because after that, we get a break. So. Yeah. So Duffin with a three. Look at that. You get a, a Christmas vacation. Oh, a little bit late, Scott. Got to get that a little earlier. And then you got Rockford. It doesn't get any easier. And then they got a rematch against Illinois Tech. Edgewood and then MSOE again. 
And then comes that big game on the 14th where we'll be back here right. against Concordia, the conference leader. So I, was, uh, I like to keep track of when the Badgers play, and uh, it'll be over a week now. They play on Saturday against another cupcake. Grambling, but, I believe. Yeah, well, it may be not as much of a cupcake as Savannah State. But anyway, the point is, you know, they've had like about nine or ten days off. Exams, I think, right, is part of the right. thing this week. Kaminsky got a lot of minutes there. Held his own for sure. Under five minutes left in the ball game. Lakeland down 21. And he traveled again, Mark. Yeah. Right, and had a shot blocked. Three ball by Clary is no good. Pegues, smallest guy on the floor, comes away with the rebound. Gotta like that. Another three ball, that one good by Janad. And Carroll calls a timeout. Full timeout. Full timeout, Scott. Hi, Meals on Wheels. Hey, I'm Marco. I'm a college student, and I volunteer as a driver for Meals on Wheels. I think it's awesome meeting these people. I mean, they're so interesting. They've had so many wonderful experiences in life. Your community helps to raise you up into the person that you become. Meals on Wheels is a great way to give back to that community. Back at the aquarium. Lakeland trying to fight back. 424 left. At least get it down to respectability, right, Chris? Yeah, they're still down a, a bunch. And all of a sudden the game's gotten slow. <laughs> I was looking at the scoreboard, and Lakeland's been in the uh, bonus for quite a while, uh, although they haven't shot a lot of bonus-type free throws. Uh, Concordia now is also going to be in the bonus. Lakeland putting on full-court pressure, trying to uh, enhance their chances at a comeback. Carroll runs to run the shot clock down as much as possible and take care of the basketball, which they seem to be really strong with the ball. 10 seconds left. And Janad on what looked like a block, but he got the uh, feet of the uh, shooter, Soul, and he'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Wiesman giving you that shot. Richard giving you that shot. Chris giving you that uh, evaluation or information, <laughs> I should say. There's Charlie. He's a soul man. <laughs> Even 20 point lead now for the Pioneers. Carroll gonna work them up the floor. Takes time off the clock. Lakeland still 32 points behind their average. Desmond Longino is in the ball game. Yeah, you know, offensive foul. From Delhi, Louisiana. We're gonna see some new Kids coming in, Marty. Joseph Archer from West Dallas, the senior, comes in. Charlie Souls from Oregon, Wisconsin, but they also have a couple kids from Texas and a kid from, where'd I see? Uh, Colorado. <laughs> oh, a little give and go action results in Seoul getting an easy layup. Pegues 
Don't leave him open. Good feed inside. Scoring was Marlowe, and he's fouled. And if you missed the start of the second half, that's pretty much what uh, Carroll's been doing the whole second half. Did their damage with the three-pointer in the first half. And in the second half, it's been all in the paint. Yeah. That's for sure. They've uh, really made uh, Lakeland pay both halves, for that matter. Oh, I like the little bees under there for bonus, Marty. Oh, yes. Sweet. We should use this more often. <laughs> Scoring. I wonder if Scott can do this while we're at home. Or yeah. Maybe he can be wireless. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Scott, flicker the screen if you can go wireless at home. <laughs> Ball tipped out of bounds. Caleb Thomas in the ball game. He looks more like a foot, football player, Chris, than a basketball player. He's pretty stout. He's put together. I thought you nailed it before the game started. I'm serious. When you said... Those numbers are going to be hard to read, and they are. Yep. They just hey. blend. Number 25's in the game. Yeah. Ar <laughs> no, that's Joseph Archer. He's the, it's a mixed combo number. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. A couple of free throws good by Don Jukum. Kaminsky's back in, number 30. Yeah, nice to see Sam in the ball game. Three ball. And I'll tell you, for as hot as uh, Hall was in the first half, he can't buy one now. Now he's back to uh, normal. Yep. Geese on the line. 2.19 left in a ball game. We'll be having a quick getaway after uh, the final horn, give you the final score. Chris will make a couple of quick comments. I'll mention that our next game is Friday. <laughs> we'll get the crew out of here. Oh, nice feed into Kaminsky, and he gets hammered on his shot attempt. Jockham kind of got hung up in the air and saw Sam Kaminsky out of the corner of his eye and dumped it inside. Nice to see Sam get on the board. They should get him to the free throw line more often. <laughs> A steal. Oh, 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 lost it out of bounds. I'll say it's staying there. Oh. Longino lost it, but uh, apparently. Uh, Carroll tipped it out of his hands. There's a young man in the game from Florida for Carroll number 20. Is he going to come back for the second semester? <laughs> <laughs> this fall hasn't been very nice. I went to uh... 
course, in the action was Juckum. Gio Carrillo checking in for uh, the Pioneers, his, seeing his first action. Sure, now that the game is basically over, they start making all their free throws, Chris. They couldn't have done better on the second, first half. There's a nice shot. Good hands by Lakeland. Not allowing uh, Carroll to uh, just move the ball as they see fit. Jump shot no good. Kaminsky again with a strong rebound. The geese, no good. One minute left. Oh, oh boy. boy. Kaminsky looked like he had another good block and they're calling a foul on him. You want to show him the replay? The official? No. <laughs> I don't think he got him. I don't think, well, Sam's a pretty quiet guy, but oh well. In the grand scheme of life, it's not going to matter. <laughs> yeah. Kaminsky in his junior year already, Chris. There's a blocked pass. Yeah, that's hard to believe. Dylan Ingbertson is number 44. I would imagine him and his and the other Ingbertson are related. Elk Grove, Illinois, and Elk Grove, Illinois. Want to bet? Oh, yeah. They're brothers. Ooh. Oh, come on. You're a left-hander. Left-handers don't miss free throws. Now my night is ruined. Ping pong with a basketball. And our first tie up of the game. I refed uh, basketball on Saturday for fifth grade girls. 216 in four games. No balls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe it's 215. Ay, 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 Well, that's going to wrap her up, Marty. Yeah, I think the final is going to be 74 to 59. And just uh, hot shooting from outside in the first half for Carroll and hot shooting from the paint in the second, Marty. And you said uh, Lakeland's next game is uh, Saturday coming up in just a couple days. That's a big conference game. You want to try and get out here and uh, watch that game. Our next TV game will be on uh, Friday when North hosts uh, Green Bay Notre Dame over at uh, Sheboygan North. And with that, for the crew and my partner, Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.